what up? How's it going? So as y'all can see by the thumbnail, uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of a recap, right? The recap is going to be on my uh, experience uh, at the New York and Connecticut portions of the Hacio Nice World Tour in the USA, okay? <clears throat> so first, let's start this. As soon as it was mentioned that they were doing a USA portion of the world tour, I had known about it. And I want to apologize to Wellington, who uh, is a promoter for, for the US portion of the tour. I thought it was a scam. I was getting hit up. People say, yo, would you like to show up? I was like, what? This is not real. <laughs> I was like, what? Get, get out of here. Like why, would, like, why would someone reach out to me? That's, that's just what I thought. I'm a little YouTuber, right? And so I thought, ah, this is fake. And then I got hit up again. Now, by this time I'm getting hit up, everyone knows about the, the world tour, okay? And uh, all of y'all, shout out to Brazil, shout out to the supporters of the Goonie Googles channel. A lot of y'all were hitting me up saying, yo, you, you got to go to this. They going to be in your area. You got to go to this. Now, they asked, yo, would you like to come up? And I'm like, nah, this ain't real. But then all of y'all are hitting me up. Okay. So that's going on for a while. And then I realized, oh, no, this is real. Because then I get hit in my email by Wellen Tavares. Shout out to her. So her, I go look up her IG. I'm like, oh, wait, this is real? And it's this email, and the email is fire. It's like, yo, would you like to come meet them at the cocktail party? And then it gives a history of the 30, over 30 years that Hacio Nice has been killing it, okay? And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. So the whole time I'm communicating with them, everybody's like, yo, you got to go, you got to go. Now, I already know this is going on in the works, that they're going to have me come up there uh, to the New York portion of the tour, right? Okay. So then uh, I get hit up by somebody else, Mr. Cardinale on Instagram. They like hooked it up and they got me not only into the New York portion, the cocktail party, they got me into the Connecticut portion, right? So shout out to Wellington, Evelyn, and Eric. I'm nervous the entire time. I'm nervous the week ahead. Okay. And then like, Somewhere along the line, I just stopped getting nervous because I'm like, well, what am I nervous about, right? Okay. My brother came with me. Y'all going to see pictures of my brother. First, let me also say this. If you want to see photos, videos of it, because it'll take a long time for me to edit it in here, check out the Instagram, check out the Twitter, Goonie Googles on both of them. All right? Goonie Googles on Instagram, at Goonie Googles on uh, Twitter, right? And you'll see dope photos, dope videos, right? Um, so. I'm getting nervous, right? And, and my brother, he, he, he helping me along because he's like, man, ain't nothing to be nervous about. Like, you know what I mean? So we, we getting ready, and then we arrive to Quad Studios. So if y'all don't know about Quad Studios, Quad Studios is like a big deal. It's where Pop got hit up at one time. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, a, big, it's a big deal. It's like histor historical significance, okay? Um, it's in the middle of Times Square, right? So we sitting there waiting. We sitting there waiting. Okay. Eric come down. He like, hey, bro, let's go. Now, here's what's dope about what Eric was doing. Yo, he was, he's really concerned and um, is attempting to promote Brazilian music, especially Hacio Nice in the U.S., right? And he's going in. He like, yo, can you imagine artists still together killing it on a world tour 33 years, right? He's like. You know what I mean? And it's like getting me hyped, right? You know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah, you know, you know, hip hop artists lasting this long, being together. Okay. So now we going up the elevator to where the cocktail party is going to be at. Right. And uh, for what? Yo, we ain't even know how to dress. Me and my brother, we was like, yo, how do we dress? Right. Like, we, like, yo, me, I'm like, I don't know. I wear something casual, I guess. You know, I don't know. And then my bro, he's like, it's a cocktail party, right? You know what I mean? So he came dressed up. So if you see the pictures, you'll be like, yo, he, he dressed up like a motherfucker, right? He, you would have you thought he was my manager or something. Shout out to my brother Josh, right? Um, we going up the steps. Uh, excuse me. We going up the elevator. 
And for the first time ever in my life, somebody I didn't know knew me. He said, yo, you that, you that dude that do the reactions, right? You from YouTube? I was like, yeah. He's like, oh, what up, bro? Yeah, I watch your shit. I like it. You know, I appreciate it. And I was like, I was kind of stuck because my, the whole time I was nervous, I'm nervous about meeting Hasio Nice. I never considered that, yo, people going to know me. That shit caught me off guard to the point where I'm sitting there kind of stuttering and stammering. And my brother had to take over. He's like, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? He's famous in Brazil. That's what my brother said. <laughs> right? Um, which, you know, it's all some funny stuff, right? So we get upstairs and, you know, it's already everybody's waiting. It's like you can feel the energy in the room, right? Now, I did not know this. So the first people to show up, artist-wise, DJ Kyle J, uh, DJ Ajamu, and uh, DJ Will. So the DJ, let me say this. First off, I'm taking pictures. Kyle J, he walks up. And I hope I'm saying the name right. Like, I hate that. Because when I see it, I, j I just say KLJ. But I, you know what I mean? It's K-L-A-J, right? And I'm like, yo, what up? And he, like, embraced me like he knew me. I don't know if he actually knew me or not. I think he did. I'm pretty sure he did. But all that was going through my mind was like, yo, he's mad receptive. You know, he was like, yo, let's take, let's take a picture. We take the pictures or whatever. And then they start playing music. And they was doing this dope thing where it was a mix of U.S. music, you know, and Brazilian music, right? Killing it in their in they own style. Now, everybody's sitting there chilling, talking. People are coming up to me. I'm just playing the background because, like I said, I almost felt like, damn, how did I end up here? I'm sitting there like, yo, what the fuck? Like, how did I end up here in the presence of such people and, and, and this ambiance, right? And I'm just lamping in the, in, the, in the side and people are coming up. And they asking for pictures and shit. And I'm like, oh, shit. And all of the nervousness goes away. All of a sudden, I just kind of just going to just be in myself. You know what I mean? And it was dope meeting all of y'all. I want to say shout out to everybody who came up, everybody who showed love. <clears throat> because, like I said, there was a moment where I'm like, man, do I, do I even deserve, do I rate to be here? And then uh, there's the moment where, you know, it was just fully relaxed, you know. And so we go around the studio and, and shit. We go upstairs to the recording part of the studio. Uh, and we go, it's, it's fly, like it's, it got a balcony, you can see Times Square. And then this is where it gets like, yo. So I think Ice Blue came in next. And yo, he was mad cool. Like he reached out his hand first, like Goonie Googles, you know what I mean? He like your work, you know, it was, it was fire, right? You know what I mean? He was like, let's take a picture. I was like, yo. Now see me, y'all gotta understand, at no point am I expecting there to be some long conversation or something like that because these are superstars, legends in the game. So I'm not expecting nothing of the sort, right? Especially I can't speak Portuguese, right? Um, now, the reason I'm saying that is I, I want to say shout out to all the supporters, right? Because y'all have a lot of faith in me that is like, yo, uh, a lot of y'all were saying, yo, you should do an interview. Never mind. I've never done an interview in my life. And do you know how crazy it would be to try to interview Hasio Nice in a different language and that be my first interview? It would have been a train wreck. <laughs> but y'all have faith in me that I don't have it myself. It would have been a train wreck because I'd be just sitting there looking at the paper, sweating. Um, so 33 years, you in the U.S.? I'm just sitting, right? So I'm like, no, that's not happening. Like every time I would see people say that, or they'd be like, yo, you need to do a podcast with Mono Brown. I'm like, dog, I'm just a YouTuber. Like, I'm not, I'm not, that, I'm not that big yet, you know what I mean? But it was dope that y'all would show us support like that. But, yo, so Ice Blue come in, dap up, right? Uh, Eddie Rock show up, dap up, right? Now, you, you'll notice my pictures. I don't have photos of Eddie Rock because the photos I took 
it was super blacked out. I forgot to turn the flash on on my phone. This this was my fault. The, 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 that was my fault, right? Um, but you notice all the other photos was, was, was straight. But you could tell which ones was at first when, when I was nervous because I didn't have flash on and stuff like that, right? And so then Model Brown walk in, right? And you can tell when each member of Hacio Nights came in because there would be just some murmuring and they'd be like, yo, 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 yo. And you would see the crowd sort of shift Right, like people would try to try to see him. You know what I mean? And ev- all of them were cool. Kylie J, Ice Blue, Eddie Rock. So when Mono Brown arrived, it just everybody collapses towards him. <clears throat> and I was like, yo, first off, he showed up in all white. He had the wife beat on in the chains. And I was like, damn, I could have dressed, I could have dressed regular. Me and my bro just looked at each other like, damn, we could have dressed regular. <laughs> we could have dressed regular, right? Cause he came in comfortable as shit. He had the frames on, he had the chains. You know what I mean? And uh, he walked around. And this, this is what I want to say about Hazion. Yeah, it's a cocktail party. And the point of it is, like, for us to meet him and, like, be near them. But they didn't have to, like, show love or respect to anyone. Like, that's not something, to me personally, I don't think that's something that artists owe to the public. But when they do it, we... It, it, it shows that they actually care in a way where you like, ah, ah, like they are about the people. Like no one had to force them to do it. They didn't look like, oh, I'm tired of being here again. Some more, some, some more fans. Nah, it was not like that at all. And, um, to witness all of them go around and make the rounds, shake people's hands. Mono Brown, the first thing he does is he walks around and he attempts to shake everybody's hand personally. Personally, before anything else, he goes around and shakes everybody's hands personally. And he gets to me. <laughs> and yo, people are freaking out. Me, I'm kind of stuck. But people are like, yo, yo. <laughs> like, like, I'm telling you, the energy in the room changed. It kept going up. Kyle J comes in and he's, yo, he's the nicest dude. Like, you'll see in the picture, it's all smiles. It's dope. DJ Will, that fire. Like, he brought his wife along. That was fire as fuck to me. Like, it's a family event. That's fire, right? Um, and then, uh, you know, Eddie Rock, Ice Blue. And like I said, they mad cool. So the energy is going up, going up. And then it crescendos with goddamn, uh, with, with Mono Brown. When I say goddamn, that's just like a, uh, a term. It's not, I'm not saying goddamn it to him. It's, you, you know what I mean? It's just, it's just a phrase. I, I've been saying it a lot since I've been in the South. You know what I mean? Like, goddamn, goddamn. But so now it crescendos. And so, like I said, you hear murmuring. You hear talking. The music is going in the background. And he walking around and everything. And then he comes over to me. And before I could put my hand out, Mono Brown puts his hand out to me. And he say, thank you. And that was another thing. All of them said, thank you, brother. It's crazy because at the time, I didn't really think about it. Like, I, I accepted it, but like I said, there was some nerves there. But looking back and thinking on it, like, I just got chills. Like, yo, thank you. No, thank you. That's what I kept saying. I was like, no, thank you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, as important as they are to Brazil, the consensus seemed to be like, yo, thank you for presenting this and showing respect to Brazil. And I would see that in the comments, and I want to thank all of y'all for, you know, rocking with me. And, you know, for everyone to, to, to feel that way, even down to the artists, yo, that means something. Shout out to Dexter. Shout out to Emma Cedar. Oh, hold on. I'll get to that later because there was something that happened at the, uh, at the cocktail party. Um, shout out to all the artists, right, that I've reacted to. So, Mono Brown comes up. I shake his hand. As I said, he, he's making the rounds. He's taking photos, everything. Shake his hand. And I say, yo, you know, Negro drama, that's important to me. Like, for, for it to be a song that I found so recently, it means a lot to me. And you know what he said? He was like, Negro drama, that's my life. And that's all he had to say. Like, I completely understood it. You, know, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, the whole time he's supposed to be he was speaking English, and he was like, yo, that's my life. You know what I mean? And then he, he was like, uh basically had a good time right and then he 
bouncing because he has to make rounds and shit. All of them have to go and do them. And they got to prepare for the performance part of the tour. So at no point did I expect for there to be some long conversation or nothing like that. But the fact that they showed love and they like would approach me and shake my hand, that was fire, okay? Um, so then the night goes on and yo, somebody representing uh, Lab Phantasma, uh, Emma Cedar's collective came up to me. Yo, yo, she was mad nice. She was saying that Emma Zeta, Emma Cita, excuse me, yo, I'm rushing my words. She was saying that Emma Cedar appreciated, you know, like the videos that I posted and that she thought it was dope and they thought it was dope that uh, I'm attempted to learn and um, make the connections and, you know, and I was supposed to speak with them again later on that night. I couldn't find them. Like me and my brother searched. Uh, like we left about 1.30 and we searched around before we left. I was like, oh, you see the way things work on that level. Like you saw how everybody was working to make sure everything took place. So that way when Hasio Nice arrived, they didn't have to worry about nothing, right? So you had the charcuterie boards and the food and the drinks and you know, whatever else, you know what I mean? And it, and it was just interesting to see. So that, that was the first night, man. And that, that was fire because everybody was asking, yo, are you going to the next concert? Ice Blue asked, yo, you going to the Connecticut one, right? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to be in CT, right? Okay. So then that next night, this is where it's like, yo, the next night, me and my bro, we in New York City and we, uh, like the actual city, like Manhattan. That's why I said New York City, right? And we go to Connecticut, but we want to be early. We want to make sure we're there on time. So we show up and we arrive at like 6.30 and it's not due to start until like, I think nine is when they was going to start allowing people in. So we there early as shit. So shout out to Eric once again, Mr. Cardinale. Um, he's like, yo, they already here, bro. I was like, what? And we look over. And is is the whole group, the manager, um, shout out to her, um, I forget her name at the at the time. She was showing love. Uh, Mono Brown's son was there. Um, and then I seen this chick, and I just thought she was part of the uh, she was part of the group, right? Okay, so that's going to come back into play here, right? Um, because I seen this chick, she was just standing there. I was like, oh, she fly. She got the bucket hat on. Okay. And then and she was just talking to Mono Brown. Mono Brown, this is another thing. He was there getting his hair cut. Like, he was just there early getting his hair cut. And you could tell they kind of came to feel, I don't know, maybe the, like the spirit and the, or the atmosphere of the place. Because they, they was just lamping and chilling. All right. So we sitting there like, yo, this is crazy. So we, like, walked around, waited for some time to pass. We go inside with, like, a half hour left to go, right? And so I'm chilling and I'm going to walk out and somebody go, Hey, and I look and it's the girl who was out there with Mono Brown. I'm like, Oh shit. Right. And so she like, yo, you do the, the, the videos online. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, chop it up. Okay. Boom. So then we over there chilling, waiting. And then she comes over and she goes, yo, basically we talked about, the fact that she was out there speaking with him. she, she's a fan, but she was able to go over there and speak. And her name is Dree. Shout out to Dree on, on IG is bad girl Dree Dree. Shout out to her because <clears throat> there was a moment we all got in. Everything was fine. Everything was filling up in the club, getting ready for the concert. And yo, she, she was in VIP and she was like, yo, y'all not in VIP. I was like, nah, like, you know, uh, we good, like, you know. And she's like, nah, 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 you got to get in, right? So we just sitting there waiting, chilling. And then she was like, all of a sudden she came back maybe 20 minutes later. She's like, hey, let's go. So she got us in the VIP. Shout out to her, Dree, you know what I mean? So here's something y'all should know about me. This is my first ever concert I ever went to. I just never thought about going to a concert. Like, 
you know, I listen to the music, I listen to the music, right? Um, but I will say this made me actually think about like wanting to experience more concerts and shit like that. But so we got to the VIP section. Yo, my glasses are crooked. We get to the VIP section. You got the opening acts, right? He did like a remix of uh, a Janga, right? And I'm like, okay, it's going down because you can feel the energy. You feel the energy. And you'll know, go on the Instagram and go look at my photo. Y'all already know this. Brazil already know how your fans are. Everybody getting hype. You know what I mean? They getting hype. They getting hype. The, the lights went down. And so there's two things about this that stuck out the concert. It was the, the first was the fans. They started chanting for Hacio Nice and all that. And then, and every song, they knew every word. Every song, every song. And this, but I'm looking at the crowd. The crowd, I would say over half of them were younger than Hacio Nice has been an active group. Like a lot of these, that's the craziest thing I can say about this group is so m- they rep every single age group and Brazil loves them. It crosses race. It seems to cross even political lines. Like I'll see people liking my comments. I mean, excuse me, liking my videos and then disagreeing with the stuff I said, which is me just talking about the lyrics that, you know, it, it, so <clears throat> there's people on certain political lines. They still listen to Hacio Nice. And as I said, it was explained to me that Hacio Dice has even been on like the standardized testing uh, in questions in some forms, right? So the crowd, you could feel it. Um, it's almost like euphoria, like everybody was getting hyped. And then they walk out. Now, this is the second part. They've been doing this this long and they weren't taking any shortcuts. They weren't holding the mic out. You know what I mean? Because Mono Brown, he keep the mic right there. So they not holding the mic out. They not uh, making the crowd finish all the words. They not just standing still. They mad energetic, right? Like they in shape enough to where they, they uh, got breath control, right? Like these are all those things that matter to, to artists, even if you a young one to an old one. A lot of these young artists can't even do that. But I'm looking at Hacio Nice. I'm like, they have children that are grown, adults, and they still killing it, right? So I'm like, yo. And then they played all the classics, all the classics, right? To the point where I would say I had reacted to maybe 80% of what, uh, what they was, was spitting. And um, yo. When they, fir- when they first step out and start spitting, you just see people just go into a, like, damn near a trance. It was like euphoria. It was hot in that motherfucker. It was loud as shit. And the, the acoustics wasn't that good in the club. Yo, the next day, my, I couldn't hear shit. You feel me? I, my shit's still ringing a little bit. But to see the crowd and Hacio Nice MCs be almost on one accord, it was like, damn. You know what I mean? And then, as I said, they weren't taking any shortcuts. And they killed it. All right? So now, all of a sudden, the show's not fully done yet. Eric, come and get me. He go, hey, let's go to the back. I'm like, what? He said, yeah, you're going to meet him. I was like, what the fuck? I'm like, oh, shit. Now I'm back to being nervous because I'm like, oh, shit. So we go in the back. Well, we, we waiting. And we waiting because the show is still going. So we had to wait. But then, you know, security was like, they was real tight. Of course, of course, right? And so we had to sit there and wait. And then we go to the back where they all chilling at. And everybody is coming to pay their respects. You know, everybody coming to shake hands and, and dap them up, dap them up and like speak to them. And I'm just sitting there chilling because I don't even I don't even know. And in a way, I'm worn out because I did quad studios and then 
and then the uh, Connecticut show, and I barely slept, right? And uh, so now it's starting to hit me, like a little bit of the tiredness, right? And then all of a sudden, yo, hold on. Let me get his name real quick. Let me get his name real quick, the photographer. Hold up. I believe I already know his name, but I want to make sure. Yeah, Jeff Delgado. <clears throat> he, he came, he got me. He was like, hey, we're going to take a photo. I was like, oh, shit, right now? So he came. And uh, yo, Mono Brown was like, you like the show? I was like, hell yeah, like the energy was crazy. And he was just like, yo, sit down. So he took the photo, bye. And that, and that was that. They bounced, like, you know what I mean? Because it's on to the next thing for them. They, they expended mad energy. You know what I mean? Like I said, they, they weren't taking no shortcuts. They've been doing this all these years. Now, the thing is, we got some artists over here in the U.S., Jay-Z, uh, Snoop. Cube, who will every once in a while go on tour and still do it. But as far as groups go, and we got like Wu Tang. Um, let's see. Uh, Wu Tang, the locks, but the locks, it's not as long as Wu Tang, right? So, you know, that, that would probably be the closest one. But the, because Wu Tang has nine members, it's hard to get them all together in one place at once. And so, Hasio Nice is very much unique. Because, like I said, we got certain artists. We'll have like an iced tea or something like that where they are, they may still do something. They may, may make an appearance someplace, but a full on world tour going from country to country. Now, Hasio Nice, it's crazy for as big as they are, they could probably end up even bigger because, like, even more, you know what I mean? Which is crazy to think after 33 years because. Now you got a whole nation, the U.S., who could find out about them, right? And <clears throat> I plan on doing more stuff on social media like TikTok where I've noticed that there are some, uh, like there's like a genre of TikTok where it's just you exposing people to other genres of music from all around the world that you experience, but people don't know that much. So for instance, Japanese city pop. I didn't know about it until recently. I got it from TikTok. So I was thinking, yo, maybe I could do that on TikTok where I sort of push and promote, you know, the Brazilian music that I listen to. Because right now, the Brazilian music that's sort of represented when it comes to TikTok is funk. You know what I mean? That, I'd probably say that's the most. But the hip hop is the biggest. And I'm talking about two people in the U.S., right? Of course, it'd be different in Brazil. But uh, I would say funk would be the one. Uh, sort of the way, like, for in the U.S., the South African music we know the most would probably be uh, right now that we listen to the most would probably be I'm a piano. Um, but yeah, that, that was my whole thinking is like, yo, this, uh, this should be sent to the world because there's a connection there. Like I said, this is black music for me. It is going to be interesting going forward, how the channel goes, because I noticed that, um, there is an age divide still when it comes to newer artists. Um, but it's dope that some people are willing to listen to them and, and hear them out. And I, and I just want to make sure that I'm uh, doing my part to promote Brazilian hip hop. But yo, this was dope. Like, you know what I mean? I, the, the experience was great. The fact that Hasio Nice MCs even invited me to come and partake in the tour. It was like, damn, you know, I, I had fun and, uh, you know, there was there were times where I, I wish I, that I remembered everybody's name. But shout out to everybody who came up and was like, you know, showing me love and saying like what I was doing was important and how much they appreciated. Yo, one person told me like he lives here in the States now and he was like, yo, my boy from back home in Brazil, he let me know about you. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah. So then I watched it. I watched every video. And he was like, he felt embarrassed. but. Nah, think about this. Think about how crazy the internet works and how YouTube works and how what things have become. I'm here in the U.S. <clears throat> I'm listening to music from Brazil in the U.S. It goes out. Brazilians react to it, right? They like it in Brazil. There's some Brazilians in the U.S. and there are some who say that they utilize my work to help, like, show the art form to their friends. And then there's some who just, it makes them feel good to know that 
you know, there's people from over here that recognize and respect the culture. Because oftentimes people, when I first started, they would say, yeah, you see, it's not just carnival, um, big booties and, and uh, violence. And, and I was like, yo, I never thought about it like that. Like I'm not, as y'all can tell now, I'm not one of those types. I wasn't raised that way to just label people as the stereotype. I, I've been interested in learning more about them. You know, shout out to everybody all over. Shout out to everybody who live in, in the favelas. I know life is hard. I seen comments in the comment section where people was like, yo, this is dope. This is a dream for them. And yo, shout out to y'all. I don't ever want to disrespect y'all or anything like that. That's why I never wanted to act like a colonizer on the channel. I never wanted to just pump it out and be like, I'm getting views and all that. So when I would see a comment like that, and then it would have a bunch of likes. I'm like, nigga, you don't fucking know me. I look like I'm trying to get views. I'm still watching Break It Bad and that bitch is only getting 8,000 views. I was, yo, yo, there was a moment where I swear to God, my Hacio Nice reactions was getting like uh, over 500,000 views. And then I would put Breaking Bad and <laughs> Breaking Bad would get like 7,000. But yeah, um, you know, this is this is fun, you know. It's it's been interesting, and yeah, yeah. Shout out to y'all. Thank thank y'all for allowing this to take place. You know, everybody keeps saying, "Yo, the next thing is coming to Brazil." You know, I gotta work and shit like that. My my plan is, if YouTube becomes my own my way my way of making a living, where I don't have to have a real job. Yeah, I'd, I'd visit, right? Um. So, like, I'm working on that, making this YouTube thing uh, pop off. Yeah. Thank y'all. Shout out to Hacio Nice MCs. Shout out to all the Brazilian artists. Shout out to everybody who showed me love. Shout out to everybody that I mentioned. Uh, Dre, um, Hacio Nice, of course. Uh, DJ Will, DJ Ajamu, uh, Wellington, Eric. It was dope, man. It was fun. Like, I, I had a good time, and, you know, I could feel the energy. And believe me, I see why they're legends, you know? Hey, shout out to y'all. Thank y'all for the support. And even get me to the point where I could, you know, experience that.